Lynn, continue with your explanation of what's going on in the Mill Creek Park um, situation, please. Okay, um, yesterday I was speaking, um, this is Mother's Day, uh, May 8th, 2016, and we're going backwards in time with each one of these installations. We're going from the most current uh, occurrences and we're trying to give you a his an historical perspective. Um, what has uh, happened is um, we have a park board in turmoil right now and the reason that's happening is because of things that were done in the past. So yesterday I was talking about the mission statement for the park being changed. You can research it yourself. I didn't use the exact right wording. The last paragraph was never on the mission statement before. And um, it kind of alludes to the park has to make money. So um, what has been in place, and we're going to go back in time now to 1980 when the steel mills collapsed. Um, two companies, Everflow Eastern Limited Partnership of Canfield and uh, Ohio Valley Energy of Austintown uh, did business deals with all um, the residential uh, uh, they put residential wells in, natural gas wells. They went up to people in neighborhoods and got them to sign uh, their mineral rights away in exchange for um, getting a signing bonus, getting a royalty on monthly production, and these are natural gas wells. These are um, wells that you also could get free natural gas heat of your home and they're still producing. This is an example of one. They're just a uh, small, shallow, slant drill, low pressure natural gas wells. They're drilled under Mill Creek Park from people's backyards. This is the very furthest part of someone's backyard and they go under Mill Creek Park. So Mill Creek Park shares in the royalties. I think they got signing bonuses as well and um, share you know for years they've been getting oil and gas royalties so they you can't find them in the annual reports which is egregious you know um, there needs to be probably a big audit because uh, they've gotten these royalties every year we uh, got the checks in the public records and we scanned them in and they're on a DVD in the public library at 305 um, Wick Avenue, the main public library in the second uh, floor reference section. You ask for the Mill Creek Park records, 1969 to 2012. And um, I, I will show a letter in the next installment whenever I get the letter um, from the library. Our uh, public records were stolen from the library and it was about a month ago so somebody's worried um the truth is out it's gonna keep getting out and we put a backup in the public library so they can steal these records as much as they want but it won't stop the truth from getting out anyhow this is a uh, one of the wells i think there's um on the west side 43 of them the west and the south side I'm not sure. There is documentation in the records. You can see uh, how much they paid in royalties, what year. You know, it goes up and down. You know, production is variable. Um, this one's leaking methane. We can smell it right now. It's kind of going to be giving us a headache. Uh, the Harvard study, we're going back to current times now. Uh, April of 2016, after 10 years of study, of the fracking industry, and this is not fracking. This is a shallow slant drill well. It's leaking methane. But the fracking industry wells they found have increased the global warming due to the leaking of methane. That's CH4. It's a more harmful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, CO2. So this is a very unfortunate um, thing you can read nation magazine fracking we got the chemistry wrong by bill mckibben and that is the april 11 to 18 2016 issue so i digress as i usually do what we're talking about today 
is um, the people of Youngstown are very concerned about the fact that all of these little slant drill wells, their deep drilling rates, now that's deep drilling rates below the Queenston Formation, that is the Utica Shale. They were sold, you know, in a business deal. It was Everflow Eastern, Ohio Valley Energy. The deep drilling rights were sold to Chesapeake of Oklahoma. And since then, we see in the public records, they have um, flipped the leases, 25% undivided of the deep drilling rights to Total E&P, whose home office is in France. So these uh, could be, you can't just frack in somebody's backyard. You need a giant frack pad. So what they did is they unitized and pooled all of these little wells, all the leases. So you have to have over 640 contiguous acres in order to frack. That's so you have a big enough area for a frack pad. Well, they can't put a frack pad right on Mill Creek Park. They could put a frack pad on the abandoned Idora Park. So that's why the citizens of Youngstown have their community bill of rights on the ballot so they can keep this from happening. It's a ban on fracking near the park because Idora 1, Idora 2, Idora 3 are unitized and pooled with all of the shallow wells. Their deep drilling rights are owned by Chesapeake and Total E&P. And yeah, the Idora land is a big enough area to put a frack pad. So this is what's alarming people when you have the switch up in executive directors from Clark Johnson from Wisconsin, who came from the state where they mine the silica sand to do fracking with. That's the propent that holds the cracks open in the shale and lets the product come back through. Uh, then the flip to Dennis Miller, who did the business of the Sunoco Logistics Pipeline. That can have a gathering line hooked to it to take this product down to the cryogenic plant at State Line Road and New Middletown Road. So people are very concerned. We have the, this board shifting, you know, they're doing business in secret. They aren't letting us know what they're doing. We're going to get more public records to expose what they've been doing. So we've exposed what they've been doing through the years. And people don't like this, that they weren't ever told that this business was done between Ohio Valley Energy and Everflow Eastern who have drilled every little slant drilled well and it goes for like a mile under the park each one of these wells is drilled pretty far under the park each one of them and they're in the Clinton sandstone but Two minutes. The deep drilling rights into the Utica shale which necessitates high volume high pressure slick water hydrofracking, horizontal hydrofracking. That's the danger. So Chesapeake took the Mill Creek Park leases and number 26 of the leases always said there will be no pooling of these leases. So now you can look in the public records and it now says we can unitize and pull these leases before drilling. We can unitize and pull them during drilling. We can unitize and pull them after drilling. So that's what they did. Now you do know that federal government indicted Aubrey McClendon, the CEO of Chesapeake, for doing just this kind of stuff. Pooling and you know, everybody's leases, flipping leases, playing with the prices, buying real low, selling high. They indicted this guy. And the next day, he drove his SUV into a solid brick wall, solid stone wall down there in Oklahoma, and he's dead. I mean, do Mahoning County citizens have standing in a class action suit against Chesapeake? Can we get our deep drilling rights back? Can we protect our park? We have to get answers to these questions. Okay, thank you, Lynn. And we will look forward to the next segment in a few days. Good, because this methane is disgusting.